Ever since the James Harden trade a couple years ago, the Rockets have been one of the worst teams in the NBA. However, this free agency period, the Rockets spent their money signing players like Fred Van Vliet, Jock Landale, and Dylan Brooks. Pairing these guys alongside the high draft picks like Alperin Sangoon, Jalen Green, and Amon Thompson could make the Rockets dark horse playoff contenders. Because a majority of the roster is rookies and younger players, they have the cap space and wanted to go out and sign established veterans to put around guys like Jalen Green. So first, they went out and signed Fred Van Vliet for a three year $130 million deal and nabbed him away from the Raptors. Van Vliet's an established point guard who's been an all-star and can score around 20 points per game. Although he's not the most efficient, he's a great playmaker and three point shooter. Next, they signed Dylan Brooks to a four-year, $80 million contract. And while many people were questioning how good Dylan Brooks is compared to the contract, people forget that he's an all-defensive type player who can hit some pretty open shots and he's below average offensively, but paired along a bunch of the players on the Rockets, he could thrive in some catch and shoot opportunities while being the best defender on the team. Next, they signed Jock Lando, a young center who played for his sons, and now he's joining the Rockets on a four-year, $32 million deal. Jock Lando is talented and was one of the better players on the bench for the Suns last year. And they also signed Uncle Jeff Green, who had just won a championship with the Denver Nuggets. He can provide some veteran leadership and can help some of the young players grow. Now that we've highlighted their free agency acquisitions so far, let's talk about the starting lineup and the bench and how far this team can truly go in the West. So the projected starting lineup is Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr. and Al Prince Goon. Although he's a franchise superstar of the Houston Rockets, Jalen Green has been very inefficient in his first two years in the league. He's averaged 22 points this past year, which is very impressive. However, his shooting splits are not as impressive. He shot 42% from the field, 34% from three, and 78% from the free throw line, all below average for a scorer of his capability. For this Rockets team to take that next step, the development and increase in efficiency by Jalen Green is very crucial. Next, I want to talk about Jabari Smith Jr. The Rockets drafted him with the third pick in last year's draft out of Auburn, and to start off his rookie season, he was pretty disappointing. He couldn't hit his shots, and he wasn't playing defense at the caliber the team expected. Although he did have a strong finish to his rookie season, overall the numbers weren't as good as people expected, and he ended up on the all-rookie second team. Hopefully, his sophomore season will be much better than his rookie season, and it'll help the Rockets become a much better team. And finally, the Turkish big man who's now entering his third year in the league, Alperin Sengun. Sengun has been compared to the likes of Demontis Sabonis and Nikola Jokic for his good feel in the post and also great vision as a big man. And you could say these comparisons are far-fetched, but he does have some similarities to those two players. Last season, he ended up averaging 15 points on 55% from the field, grabbing 9 rebounds and dishing out 4 assists. And Ime Uduka said he's going to run the offense more through Alperin Sengun, which is something previous head coach Steven Silas didn't really emphasize on. Off the bench, we have Kevin Porter Jr. as the backup guard. He's actually been very underrated in my opinion for the past couple years. He's a pretty good scorer, he's also great at playmaking with a subpar Rockets offense, and he's also improved as a shooter shooting 37% from 3 which is just above league average. He can do a little bit of everything and he's really important for the Rockets. However, with the signing of Fred Van Vliet, he will unfortunately be moved now to the bench. The Rockets might trade him to move him to a more open role and package him with a guy like Jay Sean T to get more in return and actually make a playoff push. Next, we have the fourth pick from this year's draft, Amon Thompson, one of the Thompson twins from Overtime Elite. Amon is a freak athlete, he's very fast, he can get to the rim quick and finish very well. His three point shooting does need to improve, so does some of his defense, but he can be a very good player for the Rockets. And he's 6'7, 215, so having him anywhere between the 1 to 3 is going to be very beneficial for the Rockets bench. Two other forwards who do a great job off this bench are Jay Shante and Tari Eason. Tate's much older, around 27 years old, and Eason was just drafted in the 2021 draft. Eason's a very good defender, he's pretty physical, he's, he's going to be a good force for this Rockets bench. We already talked about Jock Lando, but he'll be a good defensive contributor and he'll do a good job backing up Sengu. Two other guys off the bench, Jeff Green and Cam Whitmore. Whitmore fell heavily in the draft, people were saying he's going to be a top 10 pick, top 7 pick, but he fell all the way down to number 20 the Rockets which makes their draft even more impressive so Kim Whitmore I'm not sure how many minutes he's gonna get because there's already a crowded rotation but if the Rockets do plan to trade Kevin Porter Jr. or Jay Shante expect Kim Whitmore to come in and steal a bunch of minutes when we look at the overall outlook for this team I think two things are very important number one defense this team was one of the worst teams in defense in the entire NBA all of last season. Adding Dylan Brooks is going to help that a lot. He's an all defensive type player and Van Vliet also is a pretty good defender at the point guard position. 
In order for him to make the true offensive impact as well, Dylan Brooks is going to have to hit his shots. He doesn't have the best catch and shoot percentage, but with Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, and Alperen Sengun all opening up a bunch of space, you know Dylan Brooks is going to get a lot of open shots. Whether the Rockets offense is good or not will depend on how good he's hitting a lot of these shots. The team is still very young, so there will definitely be growing pains, but the leadership presence and veteran experience of Van Vliet, Jeff Green, and Dylan Brooks will help them move through these challenges. And finally, when we compare them to other teams in the Western Conference, how good are they and will they have a shot at making the playoffs? I think based off just last year's success plus some good offseason moves, there's a good amount of teams we can pretty much guarantee that's going to at least make the play-in. The Lakers, Warriors, Suns, Nuggets, Grizzlies, Clippers, and Kings. I mean, that's already seven teams I will guarantee will make it or be at least a 10 seed. Next, we have three teams I really don't know how they're going to do because they have a lot of questions themselves. The Mavericks with Luka and Kyrie, is that fit really going to be bad again for a whole another regular season or will they learn how to work together and make their way into the playoffs? Number two, the Timberwolves. Again, another team with bad fit except this time at the big man position. Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. We know Anthony Edwards is a superstar, but those two guys, if they don't do well down low at the post, then this team will not be going anywhere. And third, the Pelicans. We don't know if Zion is going to play or whatever injury concerns he really has. We know McCollum, Ingram, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, Valanciunas, those guys make up a really solid core. But bringing a guy like Zion back, the true best player on this team, when healthy, a really dominant force, could do miracles for a team like the Pelicans. I think the OKC Thunder can be a surprise team. They snuck into the play in this year and they also have Chet Holmgren making his NBA debut. He can be very scary alongside SGA, Jalen Williams, and Josh Giddy. So realistically, the Rockets are going to be in a three-team battle pretty much for the number 10 seed with the Pelicans and the Thunder in my opinion. And this is without accounting for the Spurs and Victor Wembanyama. I really don't know how good or how much of an impact Victor is going to be in his first season. I know he's going to be a phenomenal player overall, but is he going to bring that Spurs team who did terrible this past season all the way up to a 10 seed or playing spot? Realistically, in today's NBA, I don't think so, but let's put the Spurs in that conversation. So we're talking about the Pelicans, Spurs, Rockets, and Thunder all fighting for the 10 seed. It's a tough position to be in. Although the Rockets could make a trade, like I mentioned, they could piece together some of their draft picks, Kevin Porter Jr. and Jay Sean Tate, and they could land a special player to improve this core, which consists of some really good young players and some established veterans. So right now, it doesn't look like the Rockets could make the playoffs, although they could sneak in as a 10 or 9 seed if everything goes well for them and not enough goes well for other teams that are fighting for that 9 or 10 seed. Thank you guys for watching today's video and hearing my analysis on this year's upcoming Rockets team and whether they have a shot at the NBA playoffs or play-in.